on this episode. I have no question that we have the best car in the field. It's ridiculous how far the team have come. Just time to go out and show it. He just turns in like that. <laughs> it's going to be a battle of attrition out there for sure. Winning breeds winning. We just need to get that first win. This is Launch Control. This is arguably the most critical moment in this team's existence. It's the first qualifying session of the 2019 America's Rallycross Championship. Has this team done enough in the off-season? Have they made the right steps? All that time invested? Is all that work going to pay off? Fittingly, qualifying places the team's new driver, defending champion Scott Speed, head-to-head -head with ex-teammate Tanner Faust. There could not be a better benchmark. The first launch of the season, the Subaru noses ahead. The crush of the first corner, the moment of truth, arrives. To understand the significance of this moment, you have to go back to the final event of 2018. Subaru finished the year without a single podium. I'm not giving up. Never, 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 ever. We're one spot off, but it's uh, for us, it's not good enough. The car is so much better. The team has worked so hard. We'll fight back. We'll, uh, we'll look for the future. Winning breeds winning. We just need to get that first win. So now we can already, today or tomorrow, start the development work to be on top of the podium next year. A year with so much progress, but no results. The team faced a difficult off-season. But they faced the challenge head-on. Bolstered by Subaru's belief in the team, they set out to find the missing elements. In 2018, those cars were the best rallycross cars we had built. And 2019 is um, an evolution of that. And I would say it's a major evolution. And you look at this car now compared to when I first joined the team with the 15X, it's ridiculous how far the team have come. In Rallycross this season, uh, we have a three car lineup. We have Patrick Sandell, we have Chris Atkinson, and the off season we signed Scott Speed. And Scott Speed has allowed us to uh, revisit our car, help us develop a car. He came in with a fresh set of eyes. It's just interesting to see different areas he's worked on. Um, we've found some gains, which we were looking for. I'm so confident right now of everything we found. I have no question that we have the best car in the field. We deserved a win already last year, uh, but I think this year we will make it happen. We're not doing all this work just to get on the podium. I'd say at the first event, we're hoping to win. Three drivers arrive at round one in mid-Ohio, confident they have the wheels under them to achieve that goal. Yeah, it's a weird one because it's such a long off-season and then all of a sudden it's, the days come round and here we are, first race, first session. Uh, everything we've done over the off-season felt really good, car feels great, so just time to go out and show it. Finally, we'll see here in the next hour where we stack up to everybody else. Where we are is as much as we could have done realistically, so got to go in knowing that that's the best we're going to give for now. We have all the right tools in place, but we don't have the history. Until you're on the top step of the podium, you don't know. Back to qualifying, and speed launches to a half car length lead. Contact. He slides wide, but it's all part of the plan, giving him the inside line for turn two. Speed is through and never looks back. Clear by two. Clear by four. In just a few turns, this team's prospects have changed. The hunters have become the hunted. Speed finishes the session in first place. 
Chris Atkinson and Patrick Sandell line up for the second qualifying race. They both smell blood in the water. Now it's their turn to strike. Off the line, Atkinson gets the jump. Sandell's reaction time was off, but he recovers with the inside line. Atko holds second after turn one, but the dust is blinding. Clear all around, clear all around. Patrick's on your bumper. Patrick's on your bumper, clear otherwise. They'll settle for second and third. Solid heat points to start the weekend. In service, there's an air of relief. Man, starting on the outside of the Beetle, I don't know if it has ever been beaten from starting pole around the outside. So we know that thing launches really well. It goes to show the strength of our team. You know, we've uh, we've made a hell of a rally cross car. No, we're the fast car now, mate. Yeah, <laughs> I know, dude. <laughs> I gotta change. You have to get used to this thinking. I mean, we've been doing so much work in the offseason to get those launches right, and he proved we've done the right thing with it. We're right there. We're one of the quickest cars on track. We've gained speed on last year. The starts are better. You've got eight months worth of pre-race jitters. So now you get out there, you swap a little paint, you get dirty, and it's business as usual again. You know, so that's where we're at. As the focus turns to the second qualifying session, the drivers concentrate on the work ahead. car is performing like they hoped. Now it's about executing the plan. It's a push for the podium and nothing less. Q2 and Sandell is the sole Subaru in the first race. He's disappointed with his earlier start and has something to prove. Into turn one, Sandell gets pushed into the barrier. It's a massive impact. Hey, Peter, you copy? What's uh, going on in this race? Uh, Sandell's in the wall and uh, just got out. What? What happened? What happened to Patrick? He and uh, Bingham came together at the first corner. There's very little time to examine the incident. Atkinson and Speed are lining up next. Speed is in the same inside spot as Sandell. So the question becomes, is pole position a safe place to be? Speed out drags Arpin, but contact behind turns Faust into the Subaru. And now it's Speed's race that is over. Scott Speed has stopped in turn two. Red flag, red flag, red flag. With both damaged Subarus back in the pits, the team is reeling from the tremendous highs and devastating lows of Rallycross. He just turns in like that. Uh, he would have moved over. He got taken out in the first corner. It's been a lot of outside circumstances uh, that I cannot really control. And hopefully we can have a little bit of luck uh, tomorrow and not uh, getting taken out in the first corner and then it should be fine. I'm ahead of everybody on the inside. You can't allow me to get wrecked. What, what, how more, much position do you want me to have? Tanner was kind of cutting across Arpen and there was just no, there was no room. Uh, and because of that, once he cleared Arpen, he just ran into our left rear and put us into the tires and that caused our left rear to torn off the car. And then the situation goes from bad to potential disaster. The damage on the car was is an awful lot. So we're looking now to see if we can repair it, get back into the race tomorrow. I did have to tell Scott there's a possibility we can't get his car repaired in time for him to re-enter tomorrow. For a driver to go to bed tonight not knowing if he can race tomorrow, uh, he's really disappointed. So uh, it's hard, hard news. Uh, we're, we're a rally team and we'll try real hard to turn that around and see what we can do. By morning, the situation is improved. The team has worked late and received clearance from the sanctioning body. While it seemed like a major setback, the team's new confidence keeps everyone in high spirits. 
at the end of the day, it wasn't as bad on the timesheet and the score sheet as what we thought it could have been. Uh, so it was just a matter of getting the car back together. Today's a new day. We're not in a bad place, honestly. So depending on what the weather looks like, just getting some good results and moving forward from here. We need to score some good points now in the next two qualifying sessions to make up that time and uh, get back on the, into the set in a good spot. Three angry Subarus take to the line for the third round of qualifying, determined to rebound from day one's trauma. And they do. Stay down, stay down, stay down. Sandell secures a clean run in second behind Speed. Atkinson finishes second behind Faust in race two. The Subarus place first, third, and fourth overall in the session. Well, we didn't expect that. No, that was ideal. Yeah. That's what we needed to get back in the fight, for sure. We needed to get that. Now puts us in control in the, the Q4 from the pole position. Hopefully we make it through the corner this time. In any case, they know we've been here. Their times put them all in the same final qualifying race. Their finishes here decide their grid position for the semifinals. Faust squeaks inside on corner one. Stay on the outside, stay on the outside. Good, stay there, stay there. The three Subarus hunt him down, but the laps run out before anyone can make a move. All three Subarus have advanced to the semifinal race. With mere minutes between races, the team set up a remote service area near the start. The pressure is on. These semifinals will determine success or struggle in the finals. It comes down so much to the start on this track though, because the start kind of sets the race here. There's no real passing and uh, then you can only rely on others' mistakes. We need to win our semi, obviously. We got a good starting spot for it. So we need, uh, we need Atkinson to do work on Faust. For Subaru, it's no longer about shooting for a podium. This weekend is theirs to win. And their best strategy is to control the final by locking up the front row of the grid. To do that, Akko needs to win his semifinal. Atkinson lines up next to the team's biggest rival. It's the most important launch of the weekend so far. Off the line, Akko has the edge. Contact is expected. Inside, 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 inside and outside. Stay clear, clear inside, stay tight, stay tight, stay tight, stay tight. Clear by one, clear by one. Akko emerges the leader and takes control. The track is rough, but the number 55 Subaru builds a lead that no one can touch. Here comes your checker. Yes, yeah, bud. That was awesome, Chris. Great job. He's put himself on the front of the grid for the final and pushed their main rival back. It's a huge victory for the team. The two other Subarus are up next. Speed, front row inside. Sandell, second row inside. Both Subarus pounce. Speed controls the inside. Sandell all over his back trying to clear Arpen out of the way. Vicious ruts add to the challenge. Speed builds his lead. Sandell opts for the longer joker lap. It's all part of the team strategy and it pays off. Subaru will control the front row of the final, but all three drivers are concerned with the degrading track. It's a minefield out there. We'll be lucky if we survive the final. The track starts to be very, very rough out there now in the semi starting off the back row, which is not ideal in the final. I just have to do everything I can, try to go on other people's mistakes and then just do the best out of it. It's gonna be kind of survival. It's gonna be a battle of attrition out there for sure. Akko crushed it out there. What an amazing job. He did exactly what I needed him to do and we have a Subaru front row in the final. I think that's a first, at least in a very long time. Yeah, we knew he had it in us. Uh, just being held up in traffic all weekend, just biding our time. Uh, knew when we got in front, we could run some super quick laps, and we did that, so it was uh, awesome. The car's unreal. 
And just like that, the qualifying sessions are history. The semifinal, out of mind. A victory is within reach. Each Subaru driver can taste it. Six cars explode off the line. All you gotta do is get around turn one. Akko gets the jump, but he protects his new teammate. Speed clears the mayhem in the lead. But Akko gets spun from behind. While his hopes for a win are dashed, Arpin is awarded a five-second penalty for cutting the course. Sandell and Atkinson take chase in hopes of getting back on the podium. Go P4, P4. At the front, Speed has built a big lead and opts to get his longer joker lap out of the way early. One car behind, one car behind. He retains the lead. He's just a few laps away from Subaru's first win in five years. Nothing should get in his way now. Sandell and Atko have both made significant ground on Arpin. If they can be within five seconds of him at the finish, it will be a two Subaru podium. Atkinson is the last to take the Joker. He's got the best shot of closing the five second gap, but the dust becomes too much to handle. Neither the drivers nor the spotters can see the other car at the merge. The two Subarus collide. Both are now limping. Now your left ear is broken. Three seconds clear, this is the last lap. Back with the race leader. Speed has a three second gap and three turns left. Two turns. One. And that's it. Vindication for Subaru. Relief for everyone on the team. It's such a team win, and it's it's so great to come to the first race with this iconic livery and deliver a win. This was the year to perform for us as a team, and uh, to come out of the gates like this, we've got a really good lead in the championship. It's uh, it really couldn't have gone much better. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> the work that goes behind the scenes for the whole team is. You can't truly understand the hours and the passion without being in here. This is the payoff. It's all for this like moment uh, in victory. That's what pays for it all. I can't thank the boys enough and uh, all of the members of the team for getting it out there. It was a roller coaster. It was awesome. So this is for the Subaru fans following us every day. So here we go. Welcome to 2019. This is a huge moment for the team to get our first win in Rallycross in, in years. The Vermont Sports Car folks have worked so hard for so long. The development has been really intense this offseason, so for its payoff in race one is a great moment for everybody. This is a definitely a very much a team win. We are very much a family here, and I feel, uh, I feel honored and, and very happy to be a part of this now. It's, uh, it's really a dream. Very nice. Unbelievable group of people. Crazy and uh, very proud to be part of this uh, Subaru adventure. Next time on Launch Control. Higgins and Drew look to take maximum points at the Oregon Trail Rally against a familiar rival. We're still in this. We're definitely not out of this rally. Nothing goes as planned. I'm working my ass off here. I thought I could smell it when it came in there. I was like, that smells warm. I thought it was brakes or something, yeah. but obviously not. We're going to give everything now from now to the end of the rally. We need to capitalize on everything you possibly can. We're done. Well, That's next time on Launch Control.